Good morning, everyone. I appreciate everybody being in our physical court meeting today. Appreciate all those that are watching live through Facebook or on our cable channel. Uh, this is our June 9th, 2020 regular scheduled physical court meeting slash special called meeting due to the, uh, uh, the Zoom call of having our meetings. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Madison County Fiscal Court will be video conferencing the Fiscal Court meeting live on Madison County, Kentucky's Facebook page and on our, on our local Spectrum TV channel 377 in compliance with the Office of the Attorney General's opinion of 20-05. At this time, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Clerk Barger, if you will, please call the roll. Master Combs? Here. Master Barger? Here. Master Tudor? He said here. Master Bakken? Present. Judge Taylor? Here. Uh, at this time, I'm going to invite our magistrate of the 3rd District, John Tudor, to lead us in a word of prayer. Thanks, John. Good morning. Hey, John, unmute. Uh, you're going to have to unmute him. How's that? There you go. Yep. Okay. It wasn't coming up. The mute button wasn't coming up for me. All right. That's okay. We're ready. Let us pray, please. Dear Lord, as we open this meeting, we give you thanks for being able to meet in a free country to worship you freely. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Please be with this meeting as we make the best decisions for our county and our community. Be with our county and community as we move forward from this COVID-19 and help us as a nation to be more loving and understanding toward one another. Black lives matter, all lives matter. Help us practice love and civility toward our neighbor. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, John. Uh, at this time, everybody stand. And the sheriff's going to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, of, the United States, States of, America. of America and to the republic of America, which is stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you, Sheriff. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we have two different sets of minutes that we need to approve today. Uh, we have our May 26, 2020 fiscal court meeting. Uh, I need a motion and a second to approve those. John? Move to approve the uh, May 26 court meeting. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? Roger? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the May the 26th fiscal court meeting. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, call the roll, Clerk Barger. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Next, we have our June 2nd special call meeting. 2020. Uh, I need a motion and a second to approve those minutes. Roger. So Larry. So, so I got Larry as a motion and I got Roger as a second. Second. Yeah. All right. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Combs? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Judge Taylor. Yes. Thank you all. Our treasurer's report will be at our next fiscal court meeting. Uh, today's first order of business is our second reading of Ordinance 2012 2020 2021 fiscal court budget. Uh, again, that's Ordinance 2012. That is our 2020 2021 fiscal court budget. Uh, this is the second reading of our ordinance. Do I have a motion and a second? 
Well, actually, let me read. Let me read it. Glenn is on here. I'll go ahead and read it real quick. Uh, an ordinance to adopt the 2020. 2021 budget, whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court is responsible for the administration of the county budget, and whereas Mass County Fiscal Court has reviewed the proposed 2020 2021 general budget, and whereas the county treasurer has reviewed the budget to ensure sound financial practices. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of the County of Madison, Commonwealth of Kentucky, does hereby approve the proposed 2020 2021 general budget. This ordinance shall become effective on the date of the second reading and adoption. Do I have a motion and a second to approve uh, ordinance 2012? Tom Bakken? Uh Judge, make the motion to approve ordinance 2012 for the 2020-2021 fiscal report budget. Thank you, Tom. Do I have a second? John? Second that motion, Judge. Okay, do we have any questions at this time? We have a first and a second. Uh, we did we did advertise our second reading of our budget uh, in the paper, according to KRS. Um, any comments? Did we have any comments, Glenna, from the general public? No, sir, we did not. And nothing changed from the first reading to the second reading. Everything is exactly it was the first reading. And it also did go and get approved by DLG. Um, you know, when we have our first reading, just for your all's information, when we have our first reading, once it's happened, it's sent, it gets sent to Department of Local Government. They review it, making sure uh, that it is approved by them as well. Then they send it back. So it actually has already been through that process as well. All right. If there is no uh, further comments or questions or concerns, call the roll. Master Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Thank you all. Thank you, Glenna. Uh, next is our first reading of Ordinance 20-13. Uh, this is 2020-2021 uh, admin code. Uh, we do have Rachel on here today. Uh, Rachel, would you like me to read the ordinance or do you want to read it? It doesn't matter either way. Okay, you, you go ahead if you don't mind. Okay. In ordinance to adopt the 2020 2021 administrative code, whereas the Madison County Judge Executive and the Fiscal Court recognize that a personnel system which recruits and maintains a qualified, motivated workforce indispensable to the effective operation of the county government, and whereas it is essential to have policy procedures in writing delineating all aspects of employment affected by said policies and procedures and now therefore be obtained by the Madison County Judge Executive in the Madison County Court of the Commonwealth of Kentucky that one that the policies and procedures attached here shall be the system of personal administration for the county and two that the policies and procedures may be waived only by a change of ordinance. Thank you Rachel. Uh, do I have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Ordinance 20-13? That's the 2020 2021 Administrative Code. Roger? Yes, Jerry. Make a motion that we approve 2013. Do I have a second? Uh, Tom? Motion, Judge. Thank you. I have a motion by Roger and a second by Tom Bakken. Uh, is there any further discussion? Do y'all have any questions for the admin code for Rachel? Again, this is the first reading. Uh, we will have our second reading at our next fiscal court meeting, and we will advertise it according to KRS. Uh, John? I was just going to ask Rachel, is there any updates from the previous code of last year? There are some updates. Um, there are also some points of clarification as well. Do you want me to go through them all? They're all marked in red, the print yeah. that are the changes from the pre code. Yeah, I think it might be good, uh, Rachel, if you don't mind, just to run through the items that have changed from last year. Absolutely. So the first one is going to be um, on page eight. We just struck through the ordinance 
just because this year we ended up separating everything out um, to make it a separate document. So that is why that that is crossed out. Um, the next change is gonna be on page 27. Let me get there. It's loading. Okay, on page 27, underneath 2.11 gifting gratuities, underneath the individual gift, it um, adds in the event a gift it shall be turned to the judge's office to be disposed of. On page 29, um, underneath the corrective action procedures, uh, and it says the decision shall be made in the best of the fiscal court and taxpayer dollars. That was just a point of clarification in there. On page 32 and 33, further points of clarification. Um, for KRS, so for end of term for a seasonal position, it is on a fiscal and calendar year where we only have a fiscal year here. So that was just a change there, just to add that. Next is on page 36. under the safety and accident prevention vehicle management and um, we added that all employees shall have the expectation that all vehicles may be monitored by gps at any time on page 37 um, in the event an employee gets pulled over in a county vehicle or gets pulled over while on duty the employee shall call their department head immediately and in the event an employee's license is suspended for any reason the employee shall notify their supervisor immediately Employees shall not drive for any reason with a suspended license while on duty for the county. Violation of this policy shall result in disciplinary action up to and including termination. Um, on page 38, we added court charges. So in the event an employee is charged or has a charge pending with a misdemeanor, felony, domestic charges, or any charge dealing with the circuit court that they shall notify HR immediately. On page 39, underneath 4.1 employee classifications, underneath regular full-time, we just added a point of clarification since we do have two different types of work weeks, whether that be 37 and a half or whether that be 40. So we added that. And then we're gonna jump down to page 47. Underneath 4.9, on-call emergency callback, we added schedule adjustments. So in the event, a supervisor has to adjust their employee schedule or modify the hours of that employee, such as changing starter end time or changing shifts, the employee shall be given a two-week notice if applicable. In the event the schedule adjustment is deemed an emergency, they need to reference the emergency callback section above, and all schedule adjustments shall be pre-approved by the judge executive's office. The next change is on um, page 48 for promotions and pay increases underneath annual budget process. We added if awarded, so salary adjustments if awarded shall go into effect. Then next is going to be on page 53. Underneath 5.8 holidays. We added the word on, so employees who call in sick on their scheduled work shift a day before, on, or after a holiday have to provide a doctor's note, otherwise they will not receive the holiday pay. And then the last one is on page 59 underneath. Let's see here. We added section 5.11, which would be transitional duty. So we had previously passed an executive order for this. Um, so we're just adding it in the admin code. This is tra transitional duty when available as a temporary program not to exceed six months in length for any particular illness or injury. Um, and so this is not no permanent light duty positions shall be created. Sick leave and vacation leave shall continue to accrue while an employee is working in the transitional duty program. If an employee is unable to return to his or her regular position or to transitional duty, the employee will be required to utilize FMLA if eligible. 
as outlined in Section 5.10. When the employee is able to return to full duty, the employee shall provide a doctor's statement indicating that they are fully capable of returning to their position with zero restrictions. Failure to return to full duty when requested or by the exhaustion of leave time available will be decided by the Mass County Fiscal Court. So that is in the event that they're on workers' comp or something like that and they are still able to come to work um, in a transitional duty position, then that is something that we would then evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis. Other than that, those are all of the changes or additions to the admin code. Thank you, Rachel. Appreciate the update. Uh, I want to let the magistrates know we were getting a lot of feedback there for a minute. And so uh, Chris actually meet, muted you all uh, on your uh, on your iPads or your phone. So just to let you know that in case y'all have other comments, you are muted. Uh, is there any additional comments at this time? on our first reading of ordinance 2013 the 2020 2021 administrative code we do have a motion and a second um so john do you have another i just had a comment judge uh i think maybe a year and a half or so ago we had an employee that was driving on suspended license i think it was with the, uh, the fire department and he's no longer with us but uh that code pretty much uh, outlines that, that there's no uh, leeway in, in driving with, on a suspended license or, or anything like that. So I appreciate the update on that. Thank you, John. Anything else? All right. Seeing none, call the roll, Clerk Barter. Master Combs. Sorry, Master Bachman. Yes. Master Combs. Yes. Master Barger? Master Tudor? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, next, we have our first read of Ordinance 2014. This is our 2020-2021 Drug and Alcohol-Free Workplace Policy. At this time, I need a motion and a second to approve. Roger? Uh, unmute Roger, please. Oh. Hey, Roger, can you uh, unmute yourself? How about there that? you go. Yeah, well, you just muted your back. It's back muted again, Roger. How about now? Yes, got you. <clears throat> okay. Make a motion that we accept ordinance 2014. Thank you. Do I have a second? <clears throat> Tom? <clears throat> 2014, Judge. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to approve first reading of ordinance 2014, our drug and alcohol workplace policy. Is there any discussion at this time? Rachel, do you want to give a little bit of overview of this policy? Yeah, and then do you want me to read it as well? Yeah, whatever changes. I think it'd be good to go ahead and make it make it known what changes we made. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is the ordinance to adopt the 2020-2021 drug and alcohol free workplace policy, whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court has established a drug and alcohol free workplace policy, including but not limited to supervisors, full-time employees, part-time employees, off-site contractors, and applicants who are representing or conducting business with county. And whereas the Madison County Alcohol Free Work Policy is updated annually, and now that it's ordained by the Fiscal Court of the County of Madison, does hereby approve the 2020-2021 Drug and Alcohol Free Workplace Policy. And this ordinance shall become effective on the date of the adoption. Um, so pretty much the drug and alcohol free workplace policy, this has not changed. Um, so this did go through a massive overhaul last year. And so this is that we conduct five different types of testing that would be pre-employment, post-accident, reasonable suspicion, random testing, and a significant change in job duties or job change are all of the five different reasons on why someone can um, be drug tested. This also allows an opportunity if someone um, did test positive or has a substance abuse issue that they are able to still come to us and we can help them um, 
with their substance abuse. Thank you, Rachel. I did that a little backwards this time. I'm sorry I didn't have you read the ordinance. Uh, <laughs> Counselor, that's, that's okay, isn't it? Yeah, okay. I, I saw your yes. So. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. No, I'm sorry. I did that a little backwards, so I apologize. Do y'all have any questions about our drug and alcohol policy? Uh, seeing none. Clark Barger, if you will, call the roll. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Master Tudor? Yes. Master Buckin? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Uh, next, we have our first reading of Ordinance 2015. It's our 2020-2021 Code of Ethics. Uh, at this time, Rachel, if you will, if you'll read the ordinance, please. Yes. Ordinance to adopt the 2020-2021 Code of Ethics, this ordinance supersedes all previous Code of Ethics, whereas the proper operation of democratic government requires that a public official be independent and impartial, that government policy and decisions be made through the established process of government, that a public official not use public office to obtain private benefit, and that the public have confidence in the integrity of its government and public officials. And whereas the public judge, judges it's government by the way public officials and employees conduct themselves in the posts to which they are elected or appointed and public confidence and respect for government can best be promoted if every public official and employee whether paid or unpaid and whether elected or appointed will uniformly treat all citizens with courtesy impartiality fairness and equality under the law and avoid both actual and potential conflicts between their private self-interest and the public interest and whereas the officials of this county are committed to the operations of the county government that manifests the highest morale and ethical standards among its officers and employees. Whereas the Madison County Code of Ethics is updated annually and now therefore be it ordained by the Madison County Fiscal Court of the County of Madison does hereby approve the 2020-2021 Code of Ethics and this ordinance shall become effective on the date of the second reading and adoption. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, at this time, I need a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Ordinance 20-15, 2020, 2021 Code of Ethics. John Tudor. I'll make a motion we adopt the uh, Code of Ethics, uh, Ordinance 2015. Thank you, John. Tom. Second on Ordinance uh, 2015 for the 2020, 2021 Code of Ethics, Judge. Uh, Will you, Tom, if you don't mind, will, will you re-say that again, please? I, I want to make sure that you said Ordinance 2015. Yes, I said the second on Ordinance 2015 for the 2020-2021 Code of Ethics. Thank you, Tom. All right, do we have any questions or any discussions? Rachel, do you have any comments that you want to elaborate on of maybe possible changes? There are okay. not any to this code. Okay. All right. Any discussion? All right. Seeing none, Clerk Barger, if you will, please call the roll. Master Barger? Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, next, we have our first reading of Ordinance 20-16. This is the Bluegrass Regional Radio Network Interlocal Agreement. Uh, we have Chris on here. Chris, if you will, if you'll read the ordinance, please. Good morning, Judge. Yes, I will. Ordinance 2016, an ordinance for Madison County Fiscal Court, City of Georgetown, Scott County, here and referred to as Georgetown Scott and the University of Kentucky to adopt an interlocal agreement for the creation of the Bluegrass Regional Radio Network, here as known as the BRRN. Whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court, City of Georgetown, Scott County, and the University of Kentucky desire to build a regional radio communication system to promote regionalism by providing secure, reliable, and cost-effective emergency radio communications. And whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court, Georgetown, Scott County, and the University of Kentucky wish to operate the emergency radio communication system as the Bluegrass Regional Radio Network, BRRN. And whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court, Georgetown, Scott County, and the University of Kentucky desire to make the system available to other public and private entities in the Commonwealth of Kentucky 
to further local government communications interoperability for a fee. And whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court, Georgetown Scott County, and the University of Kentucky shall be the sole principal stakeholders that will oversee the operation of the BRRN. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the fiscal court does hereby approve to enter into this agreement and authorizes the judge executive to, ex to execute same on behalf of the county. This ordinance shall become effective on the date and the second reading and adoption. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I need a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Ordinance 20-16, the Bluegrass Regional Radio Network Interlocal Agreement. Uh, Roger, and if you don't care, Roger, to unmute. <coughs> okay. Uh, make a motion to accept the Ordinance 2016 Bluegrass Regional Radio Network Interlocal Agreement. Thank you, Roger. John Tudor? I'll second the motion to the Ordinance 2016, Judge. Thank you, John. Uh, do y'all have any questions? Uh, I would like Chris to maybe talk a little bit about this just to make you all aware and we can have some discussion at this time. Chris? Yeah, Judge, I can just read the uh, the summary that was provided to the magistrates as well. Um, it's taken the seven page interlocal agreement and kind of put it down into one, um, hopefully easy to understand page here. So I'll try to go through this pretty quick. Uh, the BRRN answers Judge Executive Reagan Taylor's call to action to begin to find ways to offset expenses for systems that have for many years been funded with CSEP dollars. The BRRN is an interlocal agreement between Madison County, Scott County, Georgetown, and University of Kentucky, which will become the principal stakeholders. CSEP dollars will be used to interconnect the three systems, which will create the regional radio network. The following benefits will be realized. There's a series of seven, um, there's lots of different um, benefits that will be realized, but these are probably the seven biggest ones. Um, geographical protection, it'll provide a highly available system and a widespread disaster. Primary and secondary controllers will now be separated by over 23 road miles, all with redundant communication paths and mediums. 911 backups, if a 911 center connected to the BRRN has a radio failure and is unable to communicate with users in their field, all radio traffic to and from the affected 911 center could be answered by another 911 center that is on the BRRN network. Um, another big one is potential 911 uh, call center consolidation. There's a large movement across Kentucky to consolidate 911 centers. The BRRN could provide the robust and extensive network needed to consolidate 911 centers, which would further reduce jurisdictions 911 costs and would improve 911 services across our region. Um, another big one, a reduction in yearly maintenance. A reduction in yearly maintenance costs could be achieved by eliminating duplicated equipment or services and cost sharing amongst the region. Reduction in yearly I already read that one. Long-term cost reduction. Begin, uh, becoming a principal stakeholder in the BRN could help a long-term cost reduction because principal stakeholders could earn potential dividends for the BRRN subscribers as the BRRN adds on other public and private entities. Seamless communication. Subscriber units that participate in the BRRN will be able to travel from the northernmost part of Scott County all the way through to the northernmost part of Rockcastle County and be able to communicate with their home dispatch center without having to change their radio settings. Interoperability, the regional system will provide for multi-jurisdictional, multi-county, or even a multi-regional response to a natural disaster or other event where radio communications will be able to flow effortlessly between the many jurisdictions across the Bluegrass region. So probably the best way, and, and this was Colleen's uh, analogy of how to, how to best explain this is, um, it's written there that creating the BRN could be explained like purchasing an apartment complex there's an upfront cost or capital to make this purchase. Payments are made against that capital cost yearly. And as you rent out apartments in your complex, you begin to bring in revenue. And at some point, that capital purchase has been paid off and the money collected becomes pure revenue to you. So in the case of the BRN, we're using CSEP dollars to upfront the capital cost to build this network. As the system grows and we bring in other entities, revenue will start to be seen from the network creation. As a principal stakeholder, there three entities that are entitled to dividend payments, which is Madison County, Scott County, George, Scott County, Georgetown, and the University of Kentucky. So as a principal stakeholder, the agreement calls for 40% of revenue to go to the BRRN maintenance fund and savings account. The remaining 60% gets split among the principal stakeholders, which means Madison County will receive 27.5 of that 60%. The University of Kentucky will receive 27.5% of that 60 and Scott County Georgetown will receive 5% of dividends from the revenue of that additional 60% that is set aside. So that's what we're looking at is creating a regional radio network, reduce our cost post CSEP. 
and I will entertain any questions because I know there are a few. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate the update. Uh, John? Chris, I just had a quick question there about uh, the radio tires that are provide that signal service. Uh, are they uh, CCF tires or what <coughs> tires does that signal come off of? Yeah, so the nine towers in Madison County are CCF provided. There are six tower locations in Scott County, Georgetown that are provided by their government. And there are two that are located on the University of Kentucky's campus. So essentially by doing this, um, you could run the state of Kentucky on two controllers. And right here in this three county region, we have, you know, like uh, two, four, six. So we can reduce our costs extremely by allowing all of us to create this regional network and we can bring that down to three. Um, and we're going to actually put those in um, Lexington. One will be at the University of Kentucky and their hardened bunker facility where the primary controller will sit. And then a second uh, primary controller will be in Madison County. And then the, the other ones will stay in Scott County. And our last one will go into Rockcastle County because one of our nine tower sites is actually over the line in Madison County. So it gives you that little bit more of a geographical uh, distance between them. But our nine sites, again, are paid for by CSEP. So at the end of CSEP, the county responsible for maintaining those towers. So this program essentially will offset the cost of maintaining those. Chris, do you foresee the uh, total payment on the initial cost of this being uh, concluded by the time CSEP is uh, concluded in our county? Yeah, this regional radio network has a pretty aggressive timeline. Uh, we want to be rolling before the end of the year. That doesn't mean it'll be operational, but that will mean that biggest portions of this network will be set in place, not operational, but we'll be ready to roll. So we'll be done long before that happens. Um, and in the, if you actually go through and read that seven page document, there are lots of language in there about where the funds will be held. So I think it's for the first three years, any rest of this scene from the BRRN will stay with the BRRN. Um, that way that uh, nobody gets into conflicts with program income or anything like that. So. For the first three years, none of the entities will receive any income or dividend payments from that. It'll be post C7 we see those uh, dividend payments paid. Are you seeing any other entities or counties uh, wanting to jump on board and, and uh, get on with uh, our uh, communication? So we've had lots of preliminary conversations with several of the counties around the area. Um, there seems to be a great deal of interest because you know most of the counties surround these up counties. Um, and their dollars will be drying up as soon as the deep militarization is done as well. So uh, it behooves them to join to this system. Um, and there's lots of benefits to it. So yeah, cost being one of the big ones. Um, but yeah, we already have some interest. And now that uh, once things get finalized, we can actually go out and have some serious conversations before this was all a pipe dream as of now, right? Chris, I want to want to thank you for your initiative in, in developing this and, and working through other counties and other agencies to uh, make this um, basically a revenue fund in the future for us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So, sorry. Thanks, John. Tom, did you have some comments you wanted to make? I was just going to ask about the uh, 911 section of it. Um, how will it interface uh, with the state as far as their EOC and their 911 systems and the state police? At this point, they are not tied into the BRRN. The state police operates their own systems, but the state police is the primary backup of Madison County, um, and those lines would roll over. Um, there is an opportunity to have those systems connected in the future if both parties wish to have that happen, uh, but we've not had those conversations with them about that. All right. Thank you, Tom. Is there any other comments this time? Thank you, Chris. At this time, uh, Clerk Barger, if you will, please call the roll. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bachton? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Judge Taylor? Yes. Th thank you, Chris. Uh, it's very exciting uh, to have this opportunity. So kudos to you and the team for uh, all the due diligence and working with those other agencies. Uh, next, we have resolution 2060. This is a Blue Mine Healthcare Center Services Agreement. Uh, we have uh, Rachel we back on. So, Rachel, if you will, read the resolution, please. Okay. 
a resolution to enter into a care center services agreement, the agreement by and between Alternative Health Solutions LLC, a Kentucky limited liability company with services delivered by Blue Mine Health and Madison County Fiscal Court. Whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court has decided to offer its employees professional health care and wellness services at care centers operated at one or more locations. And whereas Blue Mine Health has agreed to employ professional health care providers properly licensed in the state of Kentucky to operate and administer shared health care centers operated from time to time in the states of Kentucky and Indiana for eligible employees, spouse, and dependents of Madison County Fiscal Court assessing, diagnosing, charting, planning, counseling, and providing patient care under the authority of a collaborating physician. And whereas Madison County Fiscal Court has agreed to contract with Blue Mind Health to provide the clinical services and wellness programs as here and after described at the care center. And whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court desires to enter into the care center services agreement attached here to this resolution. And now therefore be it resolved that the fiscal court does hereby approve to enter into this agreement and authorizes the judge executive to execute same on behalf of the county to go into effect July 1st, 2020. Thank you, Rachel. Do I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2060 Blue Mind Healthcare Center Services Agreement? John Tudor. Judge, I'd like to make a motion to uh, adopt resolution 2060. The Blue Mind Healthcare uh, System for Madison County Fiscal Court. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? We also have a PowerPoint as well. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll get it on the floor and then we'll show it. Tom Bakke. Second on that, Judge. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thanks, John. I have a motion and a second. Uh, at this time, we'll open it up for discussion. We'll show the PowerPoint here. So Rachel. Yes, so this is Blue Mine Health. Um, so Glenna, our broker, um, myself, been in numerous discussions with Blue Mine Health for probably over a year now, um, just to kind of discuss different options for employees. And so this is a direct access to an integrated care model. So this is pretty much everything that Blue Mine um, centers on. So they do on-site and shared site primary care. They do wellness, on-site events and utilization. Um, concierge referral services for specialty care, no cost meds in center and RX specialty support and technology and tracking. So this is just kind of an overview of everything that they do, um, but we'll break it down on the next slide. Chris, perfect. Um, so for this slide, so this is gonna show you the superior primary care that they do offer. So this is kind of a one-stop shop for a um, physician the spot for employees to go. And so there's same day appointments. There's no copays. If you are on the high plan, you do not pay a copay to go to this place. Um, there's no rushed appointments with a doctor. They have customized wellness plans with support. Um, and then they also, they have wellness committees. They do incentives, quantifiable and measurable results for each individual that would like to be on their wellness plan. Um, for budget choices, so where you do not have to actually pay a copay if you are on the high plan, then it kind of helps for those copays that you would have to pay if you went to a different doctor or urgent care or anything like that. So I have resources, but no appointment for days. So they do same day appointments. So all you would have to do is just call them. They want to make sure that there's no wait time as well. So as soon as you call in, they tell you what time to get there and they will automatically get you into a room. Um, they also, if you don't know where to start on living healthier or anything of that nature, so they do um, a type of care center to where they will contact the employees if they, obviously, if they come to their care. So say if they have, example, high blood pressure, um, then they would continually follow up with that employee just to make sure that they are getting the best quality care and taking care of their high blood pressure all at the same time. So if you go to the next slide, Chris. So the next one is benefits of Blue Mind Clinic. So this is a utilization of clinic, which Glenn is going to talk about the whole money side of everything here in just a few minutes. So this is claim savings as illustrated in the ROI analysis, which you'll see later. There's also a healthier population for individuals that go for a sustainable savings. There's census data collection coordinated through assured partners that we would be able to see as well as easy enrollment through webinars. Um, so this is just kind of a one-stop shop that's going to help employees dramatically if we can. So on the next slide, you'll see kind of what all do they take care of. 
So you see primary care, so they can help anything with asthma, allergy treatments, blood pressure checks, um, cold, flu, bronchitis. They also have no cost medications on site as well. So they will stock some of the most frequently prescribed medications that are free to employees and their dependents for the initial dosage. Um, they also do wellness. So this is where we would also be able to get our fire physicals taken care of, our CDL physicals, as well as some um, biometric screenings, flu shots. They could come on site for those, as well as do different types of lunch and learns with current prevention topics, if that was also an interest of cross employees. If you go to the next one, um, is going to be additional care services. So for pre-employment and employee services, so they will, um, they'll do the pre-employment physicals, DOT physicals, vision testing, hearing testing, which are required for 911. They'll do drug screen, urinalysis, fit testing, <clears throat> excuse me, breath and alcohol tests and Tdap shots. Um, but then they also do fit for duty physicals in the case for workers comp or something of that nature, and then also hazmat physicals. So this is just a very broad range of what all that they do take care of. Um, but this is kind of a primary care physician type of care center. There are different locations that employees would be able to go to. So our location here located in Richmond is going to be on Boggs Lane. They opened up, I believe it was October of last year. Um, and there are, oh, just a few other entities that are engaged in it as well. Um, but it is only those employees who can go to the Blue Mine Health Clinic. So we would be one of the few. For all of these other locations, if employees are ever out in those locations, they also have the ability to go to the Blue Mine Health Clinic wherever they are located, if it is one in, in one of these cities, because the census data will go across the board. Next would be who is covered. So all employees who would be on our insurance, whether that be the high plan or the low plan, are able to go to the Blue Mine Health Clinic, as well as an employee's spouse and dependents are able to go to the clinic with the employee, regardless if the spouse and or dependents are covered on the plan or not. Um, if the dependents are under two, it's kind of on a case by case basis, um, but it would all depend on obviously what is wrong with the two year old. Um, and then I'll go ahead and turn it over to Glenna just to kind of talk about the money side of it. That way you can see if you have any further questions. Okay, on the next slide, it's the year over year return on investment. Um, and as you'll see in year one, and what they base this on is 30% usage by our employees in year one, then it's based on 40% year two, 50% on year three, and 60% on year four. So with only 30% uh, participation in year one, we pay $60 per employee per month for this service. But the reason, um, and that comes to a total for all of our groups, not just the fiscal court, but the sheriff, the clerk, the, the Southern Mass and Water and Mass County Utilities District, all together a total of 154,800 for the annual cost. We do not receive any claims on uh, when these people go to this clinic. Normally when you go to a doctor, we would receive a claim into our self-funded insurance and we would pay that claim out. We pay a monthly fee for employees, but we do not receive any claims on these visits. So what they did is took a year's worth of our claims, of our actual claims, and they looked at all the codes that were coded for those claims for the past year. Of those claims, if we had 30% of our employees participate, we would have saved $210,515.65 on, on those claims not being paid out of our self-funded insurance fund. And then uh, the medications that are dispensed at the care center that uh, Rachel was talking about that are um, you know, your, your normal antibiotics and stuff that they keep on stock, our people do not have to pay for those, nor do we as a company have to pay for those through a, through a RX. Uh, so that's about another $1,000, $1,023.62 savings on based on those 12 months that they looked at. That's a total cash savings of $56,739.27. Right below that, you'll see productivity. 
Uh, the $12,040 is based on uh, the drug screens and uh, testing that we're able to do. Those do not cost us extra. We are given so many of, we are given 25 alcohol, or actually we're given 100 of the alcohol tests, 100 of the urine drug screens, 24 of the audio um, screenings, 26 of the fire fiscals, and 30 of our DOT fiscals are in the contract. So we don't have to pay extra for those. That's where the 12,040 comes. So your total savings is $68,779.27. And like I said, that's with 30% participation. If we have more participation than that, of course those numbers will go up. Uh, as you can look into the second year, our, hopefully our savings would be around 127,000 to 252. So um, we believe this is not only going to be a uh, great thing for our employees by not having to come up with co-pays, having a primary care physician that's easy to get into, that is looks at their total wellness. Um, this is also a great savings for us as the company. If you go to the next slide, Chris. So the $60 cost that the employer will be paying is not extra on top of what we already pay. We already put $550 in, in empl per employee per month into our self-insurance fund. That $60 that will be paid out will be taken out of that $550. So this is not an extra cost onto uh, what we already put aside each month for each employee. The, as I said before, the first year projected cash savings is $56,739.27. Employees are going to save on their co-pays, their lab work. They do have a lab in, in the facilities and on basic medicines. So if an employee goes up there, they can be seen same day for free. If it's a sinus infection and they need a basic medication, they'll be given that for free. And if they have any kind of basic lab work done, that is given in-house for free. If lab work is um, specialty lab work that has to be sent out, there will be a small cost for that. Um, I did recently go tour the Blue Mine Health Center. It's up on, um, I think it's Boggs Lane. It's right behind the new fitness center that they're building, um, right behind O'Charlie's. Um, it is a state-of-the-art brand new facility. Um, I met the two physician's assistants that are currently working there. Uh, they have two lab techs full-time, and then they have a, a receptionist staff of two or three people. Uh, they're very friendly staff. Um, and like I said, they do have a lab in-house that does the, does the work. They had about uh, six uh, examining rooms. Uh, and right now, Eastern Kentucky University is, the only, is their only employer they service, and it, then it will be us. You can go to the next slide, Chris. Does anyone have any questions about? Thank you, Glenna. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Tom? I don't really have a question, Judge, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, it looks like this is a uh, opportunity for us to help our people, which is the goal to any of it, regardless of what we do. You know, we always want to put our, our people first. And I think this is a real good opportunity for us to put our people first and to uh, cut some of our costs possibly at the same time. So that's a, I, I appreciate it. I don't know how you found them or if they found you. But however that worked out, uh, this looks like it could work out good. I, I yeah. think I have to give credit to our broker on that. Our broker is the one who uh, uh, who also has Eastern Kentucky University that introduced us to this idea. Good. And I, I do want to make a comment that that our employees, you know, this is not a mandatory thing. Um, they don't employees do not have to to use this service. Uh -huh. Uh, but our hopes are is that the service uh, speaks for itself and over time uh, that we will continue to get more and more people using it. John? Looks like this is new to Madison County, but it's not new to Central Kentucky. There were several other locations. I was glad to see that it wasn't a single uh, entity, single unit there. Uh, I looked at some of the reviews on this and the only ones I had, saw were uh, listed as five. So, uh, 
you know, it's something we need to look at and, and uh, participate in the first year. And if it doesn't work out, we can we can always cancel after that. But if it's going to save us money and provide better health care for employees and easier access, uh, that sounds like three uh, good purposes right there. So. Yeah. Thank you, John. Any anything else? All right. We do have a motion in a second, correct, Clerk Barger? Yes, sir. All right. If there's no further discussion, call the roll. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Master Tudor? Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Thank you all. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Glenna, for your due diligence on this. This will be this will be good for our, for our county. Next, we have resolution 2061. This is road department bid awards. Uh, we have our road department administrator, Scott Shepard, on with us, it looks like. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Scott. I appreciate you being on. If you don't mind to read the resolution, please. A resolution for awarding Madison County Road Department annual bids whereas the Madison County Physical Court is required to approve of all bid in accordance with the administrative code, and whereas bids are for asphalt, bulk engine oils, concrete, culverts, petroleum, rock, and de-icing road salt, and whereas bids were properly posted and have been opened and reviewed, and whereas the Madison County Road Department is recommending award of those opened, now, therefore, be it resolved that the physical court does hereby approve the following bids and authorizes the judge executive to sign any documents regarding the contract. Thank you, Scott. Uh, at this time, do I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2061 road department bids? John? Judge, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2061 road department bids as presented by Scott Shepard. All right, Roger. Uh, Roger, unmute, if you don't mind. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2061. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, Scott, do you want to uh, tell us how the bids, the bid opening, uh, if I remember correctly, happened on Zoom, it was public? Uh, yeah. Maybe several weeks ago, when um, your all's recommendations are. Yes, sir. I'll be glad to, to go over that. Uh, we actually had the bid opening about two weeks ago by Zoom. We actually had one uh, contractor that was here on hand for the bid opening. Uh, our fuel bids, a total of one bid was received from Riley Oil Company. And it was our suggestion to award the bid to Riley Oil Company as they were the only vendor that bid and their previous years of excellent service and equipment support. Uh, the fuel price is, is determined by terminal price, but we did have a pretty significant drop this year. So our, our fuel is going to cost us a lot less than it was previously. Uh, the asphalt bid, a total of one bid was received from the Allen Company Incorporated. It was our suggestion to award the bid to the Allen Company Incorporated as they're the only vendor that bid and for their years of previous excellent customer service. And this year for asphalt bids, there was actually no increase in price. So we're still on the same price that we uh, were on last year. Uh, for the rock bids, there was a total of two bids received, one from the Allen Company Incorporated and one from Rock and Dirt LLC. It was our suggestion to award the bid to the Allen Company Incorporated. Uh, while Rock and Dirt LLC had lower prices per ton picked up at their quarry, it was not cost effective to drive to Mount Vernon to pick up the rock. The Allen Company LLC's delivered to our lot price was lower than Rock and Dirt LLC. And across the board, all rock sizes increased by 45 cents per ton. For concrete, a total of one bid was received from Concrete Materials. It was our suggestion to award the bid to Concrete Materials as they were the only vendor that bid and for their previous years of excellent service. Uh, contract price actually went up a little this year uh, per ton. 
or per cubic yard. Uh, last year for 3,500 PSI, it was 103. This year it's going to be 112. And for 4,500 PSI last year, it was 107. And this year it's going to be 114. Our bulk oil products, a total of one bid was received from Apollo Oil. It was our suggestion to award the bid to Apollo Oil as they were the only vendor that bid and for their previous years of excellent service. Uh, most oil products increased by an average of 67 cents. This is an uh, average of products purchased with five products actually decreased in price. And another thing with the bulk oil products that I will add is they furnish us all of our equipment, tanks, pumps, everything for the bulk oil products. Uh, so that's an extra service that we're getting at no cost with that producer. Our salt bids, a total of five bids were received from Morton Salt Incorporated, Compass Minerals America Incorporated, Cargill Incorporated, Detroit Salt Company LLC, and IBG Magic of Kentuckyana LLC. It is our suggestion to award the bid to Detroit Salt Company LLC. Not only they were the lowest bid at $92.16 per ton, but also for previous years of excellent customer service. Lastly, we have the culvert bid. A total of five bids were received from Kentucky Supply Incorporated, Foster Supply Incorporated, Core in Maine, Robinson and Turley Incorporated, the Interstate Construction Products, Kentucky Supply Incorporated, and Core in Maine did not meet the bid specifications as they did not include delivery in their prices. Delivery would be additional to what they had sent in. Robertson Turley did not provide prices for all items on the bid form. Therefore, it is our suggestion to award the bid to Interstate Construction Products as they had the lowest bid and met all the bid specifications. Anyone have any questions? Thank you, Scott. Pre appreciate that. Uh, is, do we have any comments or any questions or concerns at this time? Tom? Well, Judge, it looks like we've gotten pretty good prices on uh, about everything this year, especially our gasoline. That looks like that's going to be some, a great price on that. Now, I'm still a little bit surprised. I realize there's different types, but I'm still surprised to see an increase in oil price of any type. I mean, given the current situation with oil. Tom, a lot of that increase is for specialty items. Uh, it's not actually the bulk oil that increased. It's the single carton items. Uh, a lot of the motor manufacturers have started putting additives that are sensitive to particular make and model. And the increase that we've seen was from those specialty products and not so much as the bulk, bulk petroleum. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, John Tudor? I uh, was just going to ask Scott, what uh, does Scott, you, what do you foresee about the salt order this year? How much are we going to need? The bins are full right now, right? Uh, yes, John. The, we have our bins full. Uh, it's going to strictly depend on weather. The only good thing about last year was when we initially talked about the Keiko bid salt auction, uh, we chose not to do that and bid it on ourselves. And a lot of the counties are finding themselves now in lawsuits because there was a guaranteed percentage that they made you take. And if you did not take that percent of your bid, they billed you for it. Uh, we were not part of that. We did not fall into that category. And this year, we we definitely are not in that uh, scenario again. So if we buy uh, 10 tons or we buy no tons or we buy however much we want, it's still at the same price and available. Well, it's kind of hard to determine or forecast what kind of winter and how much salt salt we're going to have to be using. So uh, it's hard to buy. Uh, a set amount and not need that much, you know. So I think you did the right decision on that. Uh, the ninety-two dollars is, is a set price for a year, then Scott. 
That is correct. And last year, I believe we were paying, uh, I believe it's come down from like 104 a ton. Okay. Thank you for your due diligence on uh, getting these prices and uh, checking over and getting the cheapest rates we can do. Thank you. Yes, sir. God is, uh, is all our bins full right now or just three quarters away? Uh, they were full, Larry, at the end of last year. We do have some evaporation with salt due, you know, due to moisture. Uh, we, we could maybe hold 50 to 60 tons uh, in each bin, but that would be, you know, at the max capacity. Well, we probably better off just leave it like it is because we're going to lose some evaporation. That was my, my thinking, yes. Okay, thank you, Scott. Yes, sir. Yeah, on the salt, uh, magistrates, if y'all remember a couple years ago, uh, our, we were paying, I can't remember, in the 80s, I think, wasn't it, Scott, for uh, our salt, $80 a ton, and all of a sudden it jumped up, and uh, we actually went and filled up a couple of other of our old bins uh, just to go ahead and buy the salt at the lower price. Uh, and so we used in, in the, that little extra we had last year. Is that correct, Scott? That is correct. Yeah. So, yeah. We did not purchase any salt in this current budget. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Masters, for your comments and questions. Uh, is there anything else? All right. Seeing none, Clerk Marjorie, if you will, call the roll, please. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barker? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, next, we have Resolution 2062. It's a tax assessment board appointment. A resolution for the appointment of the Mass County Fiscal Court to the Mass County Tax Assessment Board, whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court is responsible for the appointment of the Massey County Tax Assessment Board that says members, but it's really member. Uh, and whereas a vacancy in the Tax Assessment Board is open, and whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court has found Chris Hager is fit for the position as board member of the Tax Assessment Board, uh, and now therefore be it resolved that the Fiscal Court does hereby approve Chris Hager as a Mass County Tax Assessment Board member. I need a motion and a second to approve this appointment for resolution 2062. Tom Bakken. Judge like a motion to approve resolution 2062 for the tax assessment board appointment of Chris Hager. Thank you, Tom. Um, Roger Barger. And Roger, if you don't care to unmute, please. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, I do want to let you all know this board through KRS is set up uh, to where the biggest municipality uh, of your county, which is the city of Richmond, they actually get an appointment to this board. Uh, me as the county judge executive gets an appointment uh, as well as the Mass County Fiscal Court uh, gets an appointment. Um, so this would be the Mass County Fiscal Court's appointment. So just to let you all know how the KRS sets up this, uh, this board. Is there any questions or comments at this time? Seeing none, Clerk Barger, if you will, call the roll. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, next, we have Resolution 2063. This is an ethics board appointment. A resolution for the appointment of the Madison County Fiscal Court to the Madison County Ethics Board, whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court is responsible for the appointment of Madison County Ethics Board members, and whereas a vacancy for the Ethics Board is open, and whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court has found Jeff Masters as fit for the position as board member of the Ethics Board, and now therefore be it resolved that the Fiscal Court does hereby approve Jeff Masters as a Madison County Ethics Board member. I need a motion and a second to approve the appointment of Jeff Masters for resolution 2063. John Tudor. Judge, I'd like to make a motion to approve Jeff Masters uh, resolution 2063 to the ethics board. Thank you, John. Uh, Roger, do I see your hand up? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> second. 
So I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2063. Is there any discussion? Uh, Tom Bakken. Just curious about the district, uh, Judge. Whose district is Jeff from? Uh, Jeff is John's. He's district three. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John Tudor. I'd just like to say Jeff has served the previous term and done an awful good job. And, and Jeff is active in his community down there and, and very uh, capable of being on the ethics board. I, I appreciate Jeff's service. Thank you, John. Any other discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Uh, next, we have resolution 2064, Road Commissioner Appointment, a resolution for the appointment of the Mass Cain Fiscal Court to the Mass Cain Road Commissioner, whereas the Mass Cain Fiscal Court is responsible for the appointment of the Mass Cain Road Commissioners, and whereas a vacancy is open for the Mass Cain Road Commissioner. Whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court has found Jimmy Markham as fit for the position as a Mass County Road Commissioner. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Fiscal Court does hereby approve Jimmy Markham as a Mass County Road Commissioner. Do I have a motion and a second? Uh, Roger? Make a motion that uh, we appoint uh, 2064 Road Commissioner Jimmy Rogers. Jimmy Markham. Jimmy Markham, I'm sorry. Yep. That's all right. Uh, John Tudor. I'll second that motion, Judge. All right. Do we have any further discussion? Okay. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Let's do it. Yes. Next, we have resolution 2065. This is Southern Madison Water Board appointment. A resolution for the appointment of the Madison County Fiscal Court to the Southern Madison Water Board, whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court is responsible for the appointment of Madison, Southern Madison Water Board members. And whereas a vacancy on the Southern Madison Water Board is open, and whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court has found Ron DeBeer is fit for the position as a board member of the Southern Madison Water Board. And now, therefore, be it resolved that, that the Fiscal Court does hereby approve Ron DeBeer as a Southern Madison Water Board member. Do I have a motion and a second? Larry? So I have a motion. Uh, Tom Bakken. Second on the resolution 2065, Judge. Thank you. Do we have any further discussion? Uh, this is a reappointment. Ron has served on the Southern Madison Water Board as a good board member. Seeing no more discussion, call the roll. Master Combs? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Peter? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Uh, I know this next one's going to be a really hard uh, vote, uh, but this is Resolution 2066. This is the Valley View Ferry Board appointment. A resolution for the appointment of the Mass County Fiscal Court to the Valley View Ferry Board whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court is responsible for the appointment of the Valley View Ferry Board members, and whereas there, uh, a vacancy of the Valley View Ferry Board is open, whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court has found Roger Barger as fit for the position as board member of the Valley View Ferry Board, and now therefore be it resolved that the Fiscal Court does hereby approve Roger Barger as a Valley View Ferry Board member. Roger, I'm sorry, man. There's no motions or seconds. Nobody's yeah. hands are coming up. I made the motion, Judge. <laughs> uh, thank you, Larry. Uh, Tom Bakken? Second on that, Judge. Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Sorry, Roger. I had to joke there a little okay. bit. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. No, Roger, I, in all seriousness, man, I appreciate your uh, your passion for our ferry. Uh, you served many, many years as chairman and put a lot of time and energy into it, and it shows. So. We really appreciate your service. Thank uh, is you, there Judge. any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Barger. I abstain. Mr. Tudor. Yes. Mr. Buckton. Yes. 
Pastor Combs? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you all. Uh, next is our resolution 2067. This is God's Outreach Food Bank Expansion Project. A resolution authorizing payment for the Madison County's God's Outreach Food Bank Expansion Project. Whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court has been awarded community development block grant funds from the Commonwealth of Kentucky in the amount of $300,000. And whereas during the period from May 1st, 2020 through May 31st, 2020, the attached expenses have been incurred. Uh, and whereas the expenditures of all funds is in compliance with the rules and regulations, financial management policies, and the OMB circulars of the various funding agencies, include, including the Kentucky Community Block Grant Program, uh, and the state of Kentucky. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following debts be paid in full upon receipt of the CDBG funds as drawn down from the Kentucky Department of Local Government. Invoice number three is, is CETA Inc. Uh, line item CDBG RFP number three, 15 dash administration for $3,000. And an invoice and invoice number three, grant excavating line item CDBG RFP number three, 5K construction for $108,000. Uh, be it further resolved that all expenditures have been documented and recorded and are authorized for drawdown from the Commonwealth of Kentucky in compliance with all state and federal and local regulations. Do I have a motion, a second to approve resolution 2067? Uh, Roger? I make a motion to approve uh, 2067 for God's Outreach uh, Expansion Project. Thank you, Roger. Uh, Tom? <clears throat> resolution 2067, Judge. Thank you, Tom. Do we have any further discussion? Uh, go ahead, John. Judge, I'd just like to say uh, I'm very encouraged about being part of this project. It's not costing the county any money. We're just kind of the overseer and uh, pass the money through the uh, DLG on to this project. Uh, for Madison County and, and Richmond area and uh, God's Outreach Pantry is, is a very uh, worthwhile uh, project for the county and, and well needed and, and I'm I'm just glad to be a part of it, Judge. I agree 100%, John. Thank you for the comments. Anything else? Okay, seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Thank you all. Next, we have resolution 2068. This is the CSEP EOC and JIC generator bid award. Good morning, Dustin. Appreciate you being on today. If you want to read the resolution, please. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Madison and, and, Court. Go ahead. Yeah. You're good. Sorry. Resolution 2068, resolution approving bid award to Henderson Services for CSEP backup emergency power systems. Whereas the Madison County CSEP program requires backup emergency power for the emergency operations center and the joint information center located on South Keeneland Drive. And whereas the Madison County CSEP program currently stand, current standby generators have reached the end of their life cycle in accordance to CSEP guidance. And whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court approved resolution 2040 to allow for noted noted negotiations with Henderson services to clarify generator use and design. And whereas the Madison County CSEP program team has negotiated with Henderson services and have come to the agreement to award the generator replacement bid to Henderson services. And now therefore it be resolved that the fiscal court does hereby approve this resolution and that the county judge executive is hereby authorized to execute the same on behalf of the fiscal court. I believe you're muted there, Judge. Thank you, Dustin. Appreciate that. I was. I was talking away. No do I have a motion in a second to approve resolution 2068? John Tudor? Judge, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2068, awarding the bid to Henderson Service for the backup generator for the CSEP program. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? Roger, unmute. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Uh, John? Dustin, I just a uh, question here. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I know all those generators and so forth have a life expectancy. And since CSEP is, is paying for uh, re renewing that or, or uh, putting a new one in for us, uh, can those generators be used somewhere else? And is there any proposal on where they might be placed? So yeah, absolutely. Those uh, those generators are what we call will be dispositioned to Madison County uh, and fiscal court. Uh, what we plan to look into with the generator from the emergency operations center is uh, applying it to another building here in, uh, in that is owned by Madison County fiscal court. The generator from the JIC, uh, we are working on some grants uh, to obtain a trailer to set that uh, unit on a trailer so that it can be moved uh, throughout the county in emergencies. Um, it's a 250 kilowatt generator. It'd be uh, fantastic for us to have the ability when we have issues at uh, maybe the annex or you know the jail or anything like that bigger uh, facilities throughout the county that require that size of power uh, so that we can move it and put it in place and get it get those places back up and running if we were to ever have that situation thank goodness we haven't but uh yeah those generators that is our plan as of right now are those generators on any kind of maintenance schedule or uh, kept up to par anyway yeah so so uh they have since they're since they've been put in place, they get uh, serviced uh, biannually. Okay. So the old one actually is still in pretty good shape. It's just the time limits run out on it, according to the absolutely. Yeah, there, there's nothing. You know, it, uh, they have reached their end of life from a CSEP guidance standpoint, but they're they're still uh, quality pieces of equipment. Right. Thank you. You bet. Justin, how about the one out the power department? Has it been hooked up yet? Um, I'm not sure, sir. I, I'd have to leave that up to uh, the judge or or, or Chief Gray. I know uh, Chief, I know I know Chief's working on it. Been working with getting it installed. Uh, Chief, are you on? Yes. Uh, has that has that generator uh, at station two been? hooked you up yet it's something with the transfer switch the voltage of it he's having to order a new transfer switch but mr henderson is in the process he said if you had any questions feel free to call him he would explain it to all, anybody that wants to know but he is in the process of getting the switch ordered of course okay thank you tim thank you thanks larry any other questions about resolution 2068. All right, seeing none, call the roll, please. Pastor Bakken? Yes. Pastor Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Master Taylor? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Uh, next, we have resolution 2069. This is the CSAP uh, fiscal year 20 annual funding contract. Dustin, if you will, read the resolution, please. Yes, sir. Madison County Fiscal Court, Madison County, Kentucky, Resolution 2069, a resolution approving the CSEP annual funding contract. Whereas the Department of the Army provides funding to ensure maximum protection of chemical stockpile or to the chemical stockpile emergency preparedness program communities. And whereas the Madison County CSEP program is the recipient of this funding through FEMA Region 4, as the grantee and Kentucky uh, Emergency Management as the pass-through entity. And whereas the Madison County CSEP program requires a contract for the distribution of federal fiscal year fundings, and whereas the funding supports CSEP operations and preparedness activities in preparation for and in the event of an emergency from the release of a chemical agent, and whereas the Madison County CSEP program has received the memorandum of agreement and contract for federal fiscal year 2020, fiscal year 20, and now therefore it be resolved that the fiscal court does hereby approve the resolution and that the county judge executive is hereby authorized to execute the same 
on behalf of the fiscal court. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, do I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2069? Tom Bakken? Uh, unmute Tom, if you don't mind, please. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2069 for the CSEP FY20 annual funding. Thank you, Tom. Roger? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Just so everybody's aware, uh, this is just our standard uh, contract and mutual aid agreement, or sorry, uh, memorandum of agreement uh, with uh, Kentucky Emergency Management and FEMA Region 4 to receive our annual CTEP funds. Uh, this is something we've done in the past, just passing it through the court so that it can okay. be uh, signed by the judge. Thank you, Dustin. And that, that total amount this year is $16,309,234, correct? Correct. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Berger? Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Judge Taylor. Yes. Uh, next, we have resolution 2070. This is EK, EKU Center for the Arts Community Operations Board appointment. Uh, a resolution for the appointment of the Mass County Fiscal Court to the EKU Center for the Arts Community Operations Board, whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court is responsible for the appointment of the EKU Center for the Arts Community Operations Board members, and whereas a vacancy to the EKU Center for the Arts Community Operations Board is open, and whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court has found R. Michael Day is fit for the position as board member of the EKU Center for the Arts Community Operations Board, and now therefore be it resolved that that the fiscal court does hereby approve R. Michael Day as an EKU Center for the Arts Community Operations Board member. Do I have a motion and a second, please? Roger. Am I muted? I got you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, resolution 27, you make a motion. To appoint uh, R. Michael, Michael Day to the Arts Community Operations Board. Thank you, Roger. John? I'll second that, Judge. Thank you all. Is there any further discussion? All right, seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Taylor. Yes. Um, I do I do want to uh, thank uh, Stale Bear. Um, you know, we lost a wonderful community servant, a mentor, a school teacher, uh, a mother, a grandmother. I mean, she she was a wonderful like, family member. She she was a cousin of mine. Uh, we lost her and she she was on this board. Uh, she served this community well in all kinds of different capacities. Um, and so she surely will be missed. Um, so I, my, my heart goes out to Fornis uh, and Ben and Francis and Laura, uh, her family, uh, for their loss. Um, so just keep them in your thoughts and prayers uh, and, and, and be thankful uh, that, that she made Mass County a better place. So. Uh, next, we have some personnel. Uh, we have some, I think, in the road department, I believe. Scott, are you on? Yeah, yeah. there he is. Uh, we have two open seasonal positions that we have not filled until this time due to the COVID-related uh, delay we had. So I would like to first uh, recommend that we bring Lynn Brewer back with a start date of June 10th, 2020 at $10.50 an hour. And this will be Lynn's ninth year with us. Thank you, Scott. Do I have a motion and a second to approve uh, Lynn Brewers or seasonal uh, road department employee for ten fifty an hour? Uh, Tom, motion, Judge, to approve Lynn uh, Brewer as the uh, seasonal worker in the road department ten fifty hour starting on six ten twenty twenty. 
Thank you, Roger. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Berger? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Go ahead, our Scott. Second, our second recommendation will be for Donald Joe Van Winkle. He will start on June 10th, 2020 at $10 per hour. Do I have a motion and a second to approve uh, Donald Joe Van Winkle? Uh, a seasonal employee at the road department for $10 an hour starting on June 10th. John Tudor. Judge, I'd like to make a motion to approve Donald J. Van, Joe Van Winkle uh, as a hiree for the road department, seasonal worker at starting salary at $10 per hour. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? Tom? Second on that, Judge. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Berger? Yes. Mr. <clears throat> Tudor? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Thank you all. Thanks, Scott. Uh, next, we have a road department, uh, not a road department, we have a Battlefield Golf uh, course seasonal employee. I believe we got Gary Vanderhoff. Good morning, Gary. Good morning, Judge. I'd like to get the court's approval to hire uh, Evan Sung Kim, Kim uh, for seasonal grounds crew at 9.50 an hour starting on 6-10-2020. This is his fourth year as a seasonal grounds crew employee. All right, thank you, Gary. Do I have a motion and a second to hire Sung Min Kim as a seasonal grounds crew? Uh, at our Battlefield Golf Course at 9.50 an hour starting on June 10th. Tom? Uh, Judge, motion to move Sung Min Kim at uh, 9.50 an hour for the seasonal grounds crew starting on 6.10.20. Thank you, Roger. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Mr. Berger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Let's take Yes. Uh, before we make a motion to go into executive session, uh, I do want to make an announcement about all of our uh, first readings of our ordinances uh, that, um, that any comments, any public comments, you are more than welcome. Uh, to make those public comments at our email. Uh, feel free to comment at comments at madisoncountyky.us. Uh, a copy of this ordinance will be available on our website at www.madisoncountyky.us under the transparency tab. Uh, that does go for all those uh, ordinances 2013, 2014, and 2015, uh, and 2016. Uh, those we will be having our second reading to those at our next fiscal court meeting. Uh, so uh, those ordinances uh, will be on our website and we will be advertising those second readings in the newspaper. Uh, at this time, uh, I need a motion and a second to go into executive session. Uh, we will be doing that on a conference phone call uh, and it is about personnel issues. Uh, Roger. So moved. John Tudor. Make a motion to go into executive session, Judge. Second that. All right. So I have a motion and second to go into executive session about personnel issues. Uh, at this time, we will uh, be putting our Zoom on hold and moving over to a phone conversation. Hey, Roger, Chris. if you don't care, please mute. 
Everybody, please mute. Colleen, if you can, please mute.
put on mute. Now I got it on mute. Judge, I've got a message. I can't start my video because the post is disabled. Judge, I'm having trouble getting the video back on. Okay, uh, we're working on that right now. We'll get y'all all turned back on. Everybody just please be patient a minute. Just put, up, okay. put on hold. All right, thanks everybody for your patience. We are back live. Uh, at this time, Clerk Barger, we had a motion by Tom Bakken to come out of executive session. And we had a second by John Tudor. If you will, please call the roll. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Uh, on the personnel matters, uh, what is the pleasure of the group for the CSEP employee? Tom Bakken? Uh, Judge, I'd like to make the motion that we uh, terminate uh, Matthew uh, Reeder, effective 6920. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. I have a, have a motion made to terminate uh, Mr. Reeder and a second by Master Combs. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Uh, what's the pleasure of the group on the road department personnel issue? Judge, I'd like to make a motion to suspend Tyler Nunez for three days without pay. 6-9, 6 6-10, six, six, and 6-11. Six, I have a motion. Uh, Roger. I make a second on that. I have a motion and a second to suspend without pay Tyler Nunez uh, for today, tomorrow, and Thursday. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Combs? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Judge Taylor? Yes. Thank you all. Uh, next is judge's report. Uh, I'm gonna make 
Yes. Tom. I'm sorry. I just wanted to add a comment. Um, I want to commend um, uh, Dustin and Jennifer and uh, Scott uh, and Rachel all on following our administrative code. I mean, with that code's in place, and it's a it's a very good one. A lot of work's been done with that over the last couple of years, and I thank them all very much for following it. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate your comment. Uh, next uh, is the judge's report. I do uh, want to make a few announcements. Uh, I'm going to uh, probably skip. I know we've gone uh, a, a little long today. We've had a lot on the agenda. I do want to announce the upcoming 4th of July celebrations uh, the city of Richmond and city of Berea will be having. Uh, they are going to be making some changes this year, obviously due to the pandemic. Uh, they're going to be observing uh, social distancing. There's not going to be, you know, that full-fledged entertainment day where they have fans and crowds and vendors and all that kind of stuff. Um, please watch the city's uh, websites, uh, their Facebook pages for times of when the fireworks celebration will happen. Um, so please do that. Please don't, please don't forget about the census. Uh, I know we've got a lot going on. Uh, we've got a lot of media out there that, that pulls your minds and, and um, to, to different places, but please don't forget about the census. It is very, very, very important. Uh, and we will not have this opportunity again until 2030. Uh, and so please encourage uh, your constituents, your friends, your family, your neighbors, uh, the importance of making sure that they fill out the census. Uh, I do want to bring awareness to the election uh, that's coming up. Uh, I want to thank Kenny Barger and his staff for all the due diligence that they've put in. Uh, Kenny, is there anything you want to add as a reminder today just to keep uh, uh, things that you're seeing? I know you're all are stuffing ballots right now and mailing them out. Uh, people can go on the, that website at the state to register. Um, is there any, anything you want to add real quick about elections or about the yeah. election? You can request your ballot up until uh, midnight on the on the fifteenth. Go vote ky.com. Um, we are currently putting the ballots in for people that were requested ballots on June third and second. So when you put it in, it doesn't instantly create a ballot and mail it out. We have to get those those labels here that we're putting on the envelopes. There's a process involved. It takes about four days for us to get those those uh, labels. So we are working on June 3rd and 2nd. They might be done, and we should get started on June 4th today. So we're getting them out to you. There's no reason to think you're not going to get your ballot. You've got until the 23rd of June to have that ballot postmarked, and the post office is working with us. They're going to work late. Uh, as long as that ballot's postmarked 23rd of June, we're going to be able to count it. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, and that's all I have uh, for today. So I appreciate appreciate everybody. Uh, next, we have comments from the magistrates. Um, I, bl I, I can't remember whose year it is. I think it's Tom. Tom, is this your year to start? Not my year, Judge, but I'll go ahead and start. Um, just <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> This Zoom call's got me. I'm, I'm, I'm used to sort of seeing y'all sitting next to me, but you're all, all spread out on here, so. Just a couple of things. Uh, Bogey Mill, uh, the bridge for that um, is being built and no work is started out there on that, but the production on that is in progress. And uh, down on uh, Hagen Mill, um, their, their uh, work down there is still going forward. So as you, as you go down there, you may see the road close signs and if you are, please don't try to go down it. Um, we are still doing a few things on the county side down on the Wheeler Branch and so just be careful of trucks going up and down that road. And uh, also, um, nothing's been done on um, Arbuckle right now uh, as far as the repairs over there. But um, uh, down on Crutcher Pike, Roger and I share that. Um, and uh, today, uh, Willie told me that uh, they are starting some black top over there today from a mule shed uh, down to take toward Tate's Creek, they'll go to the money runs out and they'll stop. So if you, you, know, you live down there and you wonder how come, you know, it didn't get blacktop all the way to the end, that's where the money right now. Um, also, um, I just want to let folks know, we still have some people that are fishing out at Will Green and tournaments and things like that. And I've had several calls on things that are happening out there, Judge. And I just want to let folks know that we do have some work that's going to be going on out there um, on the dam. And so if they see county employees out there, that's what they're doing. They're taking care of just some issues out there with that. Um, 
I want to um, just um, just ask folks to just pray for our country. Just a lot of stuff going on with the protest, and I don't have to talk about that. Everybody knows, and it's familiar with that. But just pray for our country. Um, you know, pray for everybody that's lost lives on both sides. And uh, you know, it's just a horrible thing uh, to begin with. And I and I want to thank our sheriff's department. I want to thank Sheriff Cole and the the things that he has done over there. And and just ask him to be prepared for some things and he's done all that. And we certainly appreciate the sheriff and all of our uh, law enforcement officers, our deputies over there. And uh, my last thing judge is just tomorrow. We want to just go ahead and be proactive and say uh, happy birthday to magistrate Combs. Happy birthday, Master Combs. And, and with that, I'm going to go with you next. Uh, take yourself off mute, Larry. That'd be fine with me, Judge. Uh, and Tom, thank you for saying that. I thought this was uh, one of the best meetings that we've had in a while, a long one. But, you know, everybody should be comfortable there at home, except <laughs> you. I'm sitting here in my easy chair, so it's, it's not bothering me none. But, uh, I just want to say that I thought some good, uh, good gesture come out of this, especially on what we can do and what we can't do. And that's all always good to hear that. And, and there's an option every time you look at something, there's an option. But I think this court is willing to accept that and do what is right. But other than that, Judge, I'm just glad to be here. Glad you're here, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we'll go to Roger Barger. Roger, uh, uh, unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, Tom pretty much covered it, uh, some of the things that I wanted to say, but I wanted to cover something about the Valley View Ferry. We had uh, had a little ceremony down there on uh, Sunday evening uh, with the dedication of a plaque on the ferry boat for uh, Dave Sanders in memory of him, uh, a great captain on the ferry and uh, knew the river well. Uh, was loved by all the people across there. He he stayed late many a night just to get somebody across that he knew hadn't made it from work, and he just he just knew the people down there. Uh, as Tom said, uh, we just need to pray for our nation. I think we're all aware of all the things that's going on, but this is the time for prayer. That's all I got, Judge. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate that, John Tudor. Judge, I just want to thank our uh, county attorney, Jenny Heyman, for her legal advice and keeping us uh, straight and uh, informing us what we need to do legally. Appreciate her. Appreciate Kenny there. Uh, he's going through a lot with this uh, vote by mail. I, I know it's been an extra hassle for him, and, and uh, I think he's doing a great job of handling it. So thank you, Kenny. Also, while I'm at it, I want to, want to thank uh, – Everyone that participated in the march and the protest last Saturday, and thank you so much for keeping it peaceful. Uh, you were recognized, and, and your your voices were heard, and, and we appreciate legal uh, protest and, and safe and uh, way to get out and, and voice your opinion. And and we we I heard I think we heard how important. Uh, every life is. I, I want to thank the law enforcement that participated in that. Some marched and some were there for security. Thank those guys. Uh, we, we can learn to work and live and love together. And, and so continue to love your neighbor and, and have civility. Uh, be civil about your uh, dealings with others. Uh, and I think we'll come out in the long run. That's all I got to say, Judge. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Uh, Kenny or Jenny, do y'all have anything to add? No? No, sir. All right. Thank you all very much. Appreciate y'all's time. Uh, I do I do want to commend our Sheriff's Department uh, for the event Saturday. Uh, they uh, backed up Richmond. Uh, the Sheriff Cole and Chief Ebert worked together along with Rodney Richardson and Tony Terry. Um, our Sheriff's Department did an outstanding job. Uh, they were prepared. They were ready. Um, they were there to help Richmond uh, in this time of need. Uh, you know, in those situations, you uh, 
you kind of prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. And I was very proud of our community uh, in the peaceful walk. Uh, I was proud um, that of our county agencies jumping in to help out the city of Richmond, uh, use, use some of our cones and uh, barricades and uh, our sheriff's department uh, really jumped in. Our EMA staff uh, jumped in to help our fire department. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks to our county agencies that are always willing to help our, our neighbor uh, and, our, and our, sis, our, our city friends in, in Richmond and Berea um, in, in, in those times. So uh, next we have comments uh, from department heads. Uh, any of our department heads have anything today? Good. Good. I'm not even going to give them time to say something. <laughs> well, I'm just teasing department heads. Uh, we appreciate you all very much. Uh, there was no comments from the audience. We've been sort of watching our social media. Uh, we have not seen any questions there. Uh, I need a motion to pay the claims and approve the transfers. So moved, Judge. So I got a second. motion. By, so I got a motion by Tom, a, a second by John Tudor. Uh, call the roll, please. Uh, mute, Kenny. Carter. There you go. Yes. Master Tudor. Yes. Master Bakken. Yes. Mr. Combs. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Uh, next, we have um, our next meeting. Fiscal court meeting will be June twenty third, twenty twenty. It'll be nine thirty a.m. and it'll be right back here on Zoom. Again, our next fiscal court meeting will be June twenty third, twenty twenty, at uh, nine thirty, right back on Zoom. I need a motion and a second to adjourn. So move. Roger. Second. Uh, John Tudor first. Second. <laughs> I know I said that backwards, but I saw a hand and a hand. So uh, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. So call the roll, please. Master Tudor. Yes. Master Bakken. Yes. Master Combs. Yes. Master Barger. Yes. That's Taylor. Uh, yes. Guys, I know it's a long meeting today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I love our discussion and our engagement with one another. I appreciate y'all, and y'all have a great, great week, and God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.